Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the most important recording projects ever. Well, we got finally to Bach, and lots of you had suggestions for Bach. Millions of suggestions for Bach. There were Bach cantata cycles and Bach thingies and Bach other thingies. And of course, we have to talk about Bach, don't we? My list of most important projects ever involving Bach may not be the same as yours because the first one and the one I really believe was absolutely earth-shattering and epochal has not been mentioned by any of you yet. It's this, the Switched On Bach Box, or it's called the Switched On Boxed Set, the complete Wendy Carlos Switched On Bach recordings, which gives you Switched On Bach 1 and 2, the Well-Tempered Synthesizer, which is actually Bach, Monteverdi, Handel, and Scarlatti, and finally, um, the complete Brandenburg Concerti on Synthesizer amazing. Now, at the time this stuff came out in 1968, most people had no idea what a synthesizer was. This was an experimental project that was a collaboration between Wendy Carlos, who was then Walter Carlos, and Bob Moog, inventor of the Moog synthesizer. And it was, it was a novelty. It was almost, you know, nobody knew what was going to happen. It originally came out on Sony. And Sony released the thing and they sold hundreds of thousands of copies in like minutes. Everybody went nuts over it. Why did everyone go nuts over it? What did this do? What was it that, that so transfixed the classical music universe? I mean, on its surface, the approach was so crazy. Take all of these Bach works, works organ works, keyboard works, orchestral works, whatever, and, and play them on this electronic gizmo. You would think people would have gone, oh, oh, but that's not what happened. We all know, of course, and, and Wendy Carlos was the first to say that Bach had been transcribed since the day when he transcribed himself, and Mozart did Bach transcriptions, everybody did Bach transcriptions. And we, of course, we knew Leopold Stokowski's Bach transcriptions and all this stuff, arrangements and whatnot. But there was something different here. What was different here, I think, in any case, at least the way it was received, was the seriousness of intent, the musicality and brilliance of Wendy Carlos as a musician, the novelty of the medium, but I think the, the ratification of Bach as this sort of super luminary genius in our musical pantheon, someone whose music was so rich in fundamental musical facts that you could play it on anything and it would sound fabulous. I mean, because that's exactly what Wendy Carlos did. It's an extraordinary thing, really. This was not a project that challenged our view of Bach's greatness. It ratified it. It ratified Bach's greatness in a whole new contemporary way. It made him relevant in a way that other performances had not or were in, uh, on the verge of not. You know, he was, he, he, it, it pulled him out of the classical music ghetto and, and somehow modernized the whole thing and made him populist. I don't know, it was extraordinary what this thing did, what this project did. You had to be there. I mean, I was only seven when the first one came out, but I, I knew about it. I knew it not when I was seven, but a few years later. I, we, we knew all about this, what this project was, who, who Wendy Carlos was, who Moog was. I mean, it was really amazing what this, what this series of recordings did. And, and beyond that, I mean, beyond that, this happened at the time, remember, when the period instrument movement was just starting to get going. I mean, 1960s, right? And doing Bach as Bach intended Bach to be heard, they were claiming, could not have been more different than doing Bach as Wendy Carlos and, and the Moog people thought Bach might be heard. This obviously was not how Bach intended to be heard. It was another possibility that validated Bach's universality.
I mean, that's really what this was about, wasn't it? And so, and so I just think that as far as, you know, important and earth shattering Bach recordings go, things that really, really added to our view of Bach, this um, is, is one of the most important productions that he would ever did. But beyond that too, even beyond that, oops, I think in a way it helped to, to also set up the period instrument movement too, because we all of a sudden, we became open to hearing Bach that sounded radically different from what we were used to. And you have to remember something. And this is, I think, one of the most fascinating aspects of the whole thing. The period instrument movement, the hip, historically informed performance movement, as Richard Taruskin has pointed out innumerable times, is a totally modern movement. Everything it's done is conjectural. Everything it, it pretends to be um, in terms of authenticity is completely fake because its aesthetic preferences, the things that it regards as valid, beautiful, legitimate, are 100% conditioned by our modern aesthetic sensibilities and our modern ears. And so there's really very little difference between playing Bach on or original instruments or playing Bach on a Moog synthesizer in terms of just how authentically valid it is in terms of the sound of Bach. Now, of course, if they're using like acoustic instruments, they've got to be a little bit closer by default than this was. But the basis of it, the theory behind it is 100% contemporary. It was the idea that Bach can be made to sound radically different. And the more radically different he sounds, the better. Because you have to remember, to the extent that Bach played on a synthesizer, survived the process, and still came out sounding like Bach, and still was just as marvelous as Bach always is, and was still as refreshing and new and exciting as Bach ought to be whenever we hear him. These are exactly the qualities that the period instrument movement uh, basically co-opted and said, this is what we are, this is what we're doing. But Wendy Carlos was there at the beginning and she, her work, I think also validated that work to a certain extent. Now, some people may disagree with that violently, but I don't care because as usual, I'm right and they're not. So I'm really not worried about that. Not a bit. This is certainly one of the most important productions and projects that ever existed in the history of classical music. And, you know, it, it sort of is remarkable how quickly people have sort of forgotten it, how it's been buried by the onslaught of all of this quasi pseudo faux authenticity. But this was somewhere in the foundations, in the concrete underpinning of all of that musical activity that came later um, and that we've admired some or reviled or whatever that we've talked about since, there was Wendy Carlos with a remarkable and original and fabulous conception of what Baroque music, the music of Bach particularly, but also Scarlatti and Monteverdi and Handel and others, what they could be and how they could be realized and how valid that process was for modern listeners. The unapologetic honesty and modernity of what she did is as refreshing and marvelous as that day in 1968 when Switched on Bach first came out. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.